Wanya Morris, he's playing through something right now. Okay. It came to a head this last game uh, against the Raiders uh, with, with some of the speed rushes. And, and you could just see Patrick Mahomes getting frustrated at it on the sideline. And the last chunk of the game, the last drive of the game, right? They put Joe Tooney in from left guard. They move him to left tackle. And they move Mike Caliendo to left guard. That was wow. their solution in game. Okay. okay. Now, the Chiefs have known that the left tackle position has been a weakness, and they have planned for a while now uh, behind the scenes that once DJ Humphreys was healthy, that they were going to go after him and attempt to sign him. They were able to do that. However, just the timing of everything with the short week this last week, they couldn't get him up to speed and ready to go coming off a knee injury, learning a playbook, learning a scheme, learning terminology. They just couldn't get him ready for the week 13 game against the Raiders after the way things went against the, the Raiders of week 13, I can guarantee you beyond uh, a shadow of a doubt that he will be suiting up for this Sunday night football game and starting at left tackle for Kansas city. Okay. So I think DJ Humphreys, like he's, he's going to be the guy, he's going to be the starter for Kansas city at left tackle moving forward. Um, uh, you know, Andy Reid said this week he wouldn't, you know, name him the starter because it wasn't fair to him coming off his injury and whatnot. Uh, you know, he Humphrey said himself last week, if the coaches say go, I'm going to go. So I, I think that's going to that's going to show and that, that he's going to be out there against the Chargers this week. And, you know, you look at his career stats, you look at his stats last season. He was having a great season last year before he sure, got hurt yeah. with the Cardinals. Right. Yep. I, I think what the chiefs are sorely lacking at the left tackle position is just experience right now. They just need someone out there who's seen it before and, and who can, um, who, who can offer maybe just even just a few more seconds to Patrick Mahomes than what he was getting from, from some of these young guys. And, and, I don't think it's necessarily an indictment on Wanya Morris. I think he's still going to be a fine player for this team. You know, maybe he'll be playing at guard. Maybe he'll be playing right, right tackle, swing tackle. Maybe he'll be back at left tackle next year. He just needs to get healthy. And, and the same thing kind of goes for, for Kingsley Suamataia. I don't think they're down on him at all. I think if they weren't in a situation where like, hey, we're competing in a very, very competitive AFC, like, like the AFC this year right now, it's going to take like 15 or 16 wins to get the number one seed. And they want that this year. Right. So yeah. they're, they're going to have to um, pull out all the stops to get it. And, and you just can't have a rookie kind of learning on the fly in that type of situation. Um, so I, I think that, you know, that's a reason why a guy like Ethan Driscoll, who I know they like, that's a reason why they didn't put him out there at left tackle either. They didn't want to put him in a bad spot, stunt his growth after they saw kind of what happened with Kingsley in those first two weeks. Um, so I think they're they're confident. They have a plan for those guys long term. But this season, the, the way to fix the left tackle position is one, DJ Humphreys, two, your emergency plan, which was Dooney at left tackle, Caliendo at left guard which was nice to see that Caliendo was, was doing really good that drive at left guard. I think, you know, he might be someone that in the future, you know, you're looking at Trey Smith, who's probably going to set the, the guard market or reset the guard market this off season. You know, maybe that's your right guard of the future in, in Caliendo. Um, so the, the chiefs have some moving pieces on the offensive line right now, but hopefully that gets stabilized as early as this week with, with DJ. Okay. Humphries. Well, that's one step. Yeah, I, I think, you know, some of the receiver struggles, at least on the deep passing game end, that's been due to projection, right? Okay. Um, you know, e even uh, this last week, you know, it was kind of a, a gutsy play call from Andy Reid, right? It was, a, a, I think, a third and two or something, right? You think, run the ball, run the ball, right? And it's instead a nine protection single route from Xavier Worthy. He wins. He wins the route. But – even with nine players in protection, there is a whiff <laughs> in the protection and Patrick Mahomes got hit on the throw. Couldn't deliver wow. an accurate pass. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so there's something to be said about the protection struggles and the trust in the offensive line and how that's affected the deep passing game. I think 
some of the evolution you're seeing from Patrick Mahomes now with a veteran like DeAndre Hopkins, he's learning that even if D-Hop is covered like tightly, that you can go ahead and throw the ball up to him and he's going to force like a pass interference penalty if he doesn't catch that ball. Like he's going to, he's going to help your offense out. Um, so I, I think we're going to see some more of that, um, you know, and some more deep routes from, from D hop moving forward. I, I think, you know, it, what they need to do better with him is find out a way to use him in the red zone. I mean, three, uh, I think they had uh, four um, of their five red zone trips in this last game were failures. They, they didn't result in uh, a touchdown. Right. So they got to find a way to use him there, use his size, use his ability for spacing. You know, they had one throw to him like in the back of the end zone where where he just ran out of room, right? They, they need to practice that and master that uh, if they're going to really, really use him to his fullest extent. Um, you know, as far as Xavier Worthy's concerned, I, I think, you know, he's still a rookie, still learning some things. The sideline stuff on the deep routes have been kind of frustrating. Uh, I, I do think that better protection like he's getting open better protection gives them a better opportunity to hit and throw some accurate deep balls to worthy and, and that's what you need to see over these last several games heading into the postseason because makes yeah, sense that's the type of stuff that that they haven't had in this offense since tyree kill and it can happen it can absolutely happen with worthy uh they just have to get that protection just a little bit better for Pat to deliver a, a strike, uh, you know, deep ball accuracy. People, uh, people like to to knock on Pat for his deep ball accuracy lately. He's one of the better deep ball throwers in the league. He's just not had the protection this year. All right, wide receiver is still. Uh, I got to ask you. So, Rasheed Rice, done. Any chance yeah. he can come back? No, nah, he's he's not back this year. Uh, there's okay. no shot. He's done. However, there is someone who's coming back. Hollywood yeah, Brown. There you go. Hollywood Brown. He's going to be back uh, before the end of the season. I won't be shocked if if tomorrow they open up his practice window, um, and, and that you know by week fifteen, week sixteen, he's back in there. Um, I, I think that you know he's come along. Uh, you know that what they said about his injury when it happened is like this is uncharted territory because you know the Chiefs had the the sternoclavicular joint with. Tyreek Hill, right? But that thing healed on its own. It didn't have to have a surgical intervention to, you know, uh, put it in the right spot and have it heal heal properly. That's pretty rare. It doesn't happen a lot in the NFL. So they just didn't know, like, okay, how's this going to heal? When is he going to be able to, you know, legitimately, yeah. right, um, use, it, you know, use uh, his 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 shoulder and his. Uh, that that joint area to the best of its ability where it's not at risk of re-injury um a, in a significant way so they they've you know met with doctors on i think it's like every three weeks or something like that on this and uh, i believe today is like the the day that he has his next follow-up to find out you know whether or not he's getting final clearance and he's ready to go so uh, we will find out soon whether or not Hollywood Brown uh, is coming back, uh, being activated. Probably find out that news tomorrow. Um, and and it's going to be a little bit interesting because you know the team's got a little bit of a logjam, uh, you know, uh, on um, as far as you know, not necessarily receiver, but just offensive skill players and whatnot. We've got a ton of running backs on the roster right now, and it just feels like you know where are you going to find room when you do activate him. To, to put him on this roster. That, that's going to be an interesting thing to, to kind of play around with. Even when he does come back, it's not going to be one of those deals where it's going to be some sort of like, hey, man, if he's back, he's at 100%. Watch out. His numbers are going to be just like you would expect them uh, if he was starting the season week one. It's going to take some time, isn't it? You know, I don't think it's going to take that much time because remember, right. this is an upper body injury, right? His lower body's fine. Okay. I think I think it's harder for receivers to come back from like lower body stuff, ankle sprains, you know, things where it involves cutting this, that, and the other thing. I think uh, it's reasonable to expect that he's right back in there. And, you know, whatever plans they had for him this season, whatever plays they had schemed up, 
I think yeah. they're going to start working on those and making sure that they can get that chemistry right with Pat. Jalen Watson, is he coming back? I don't think they're expecting him back. I think there's if if they make it all the way to the Super Bowl, I'll say there's a chance. Oh, but I yeah. I think I think it's it's pretty slim. I, I don't think that that he's gonna be back this year, and it's unfortunate because he was playing at like an all pro type of level before he got hurt. And they really haven't been able to find stability, you know, opposite Trent McDuffie. They've had some coverage busts last couple weeks um, are definitely struggling in the secondary with communication, with timing. Um, and, and, you know, with, with sometimes they're just struggling to handle pure speed, right? Um, they've had Nazi Johnson in there opposite Trent McDuffie at times. And, Johnson's coming off a major knee injury, someone they really liked last year before he got hurt. Uh, I think they've they've kind of been a, a, the idea that, hey, we're going to give him some opportunities to go out there and, and prove himself. You know, this last week he got sat for Joshua Williams after he gave up like a 43-yard uh, reception, right? Um, they, they just couldn't have more explosive plays, right? And Josh came in and was able to kind of settle that position down a little bit, eliminate the explosive plays, didn't give up a single catch all day, right? So I think that Williams is probably going to be the guy opposite McDuffie moving forward. That's not to say they won't use Nazi at some times. I think they'll obviously use him on special teams in place of Williams. Uh, and, and probably there will be some instances where they have all three of them in there. Um, they do and have been liking to use uh, Chamari Connor. And Christian Roland Wallace as kind of like you know nickel or extra defensive backs um, at times. Uh, I do think you know there there's also you know some need to get a guy like Jaden Hicks more involved, and we've seen that over the last couple of weeks because he's just a young rookie who's he's too good to have him on the on the bench right now. I know they'd like to you know have him kind of envision him as as that Justin Reed role where he's you know, performing maybe a little closer to line, line of scrimmage, right? But, um, you know, I, I think at times they've played him at free and, and it's looked good. So um, I, I think there's going to be more opportunities for him. I think there's going to be more, more um, you know, unique uh, instances of us seeing him. I think there's potential for him to come in and play some dime linebacker even, right? Uh, like, like, you know, Spags used to do when he had Daniel Sorensen. Okay. I think that, that he could do a little bit of that type of stuff uh, as well for Kansas City. Um, but, yeah, right now I would say, you know, next to the left tackle position, finding out the right combination of players in the secondary is something that the Chiefs are still working on. Yeah, I mean, you lose your top corner in the offseason and then maybe your top corner this year to injury, uh, and it's not easy to replace. Uh, and then, of course, you need to pass rush. And if the pass rush isn't there and you, you, you've lost some of your top cover guys, well, there you go. Uh, now, we just talked about getting a Menahu back, and that's a big uh, addition. But still, you got to look at overall the unit. I believe what Jones and uh, Karlaftis are tied with five sacks apiece. And then the third guy is at 2 5. I mean, so there's only two guys on the team with sack totals over uh, 2.5. That's, that's not going to get it done. Uh, for a Super Bowl championship type defense, which the Chiefs have had under Spagnola. So you get a minute who back. Uh, what about Uche as well? Is is Uche and and then last year's first round pick, Azuma, uh, are, are, is, is there hope there that, you know, they can start picking up the pace as well? Yeah, you know, I think Felix, I think Omenihu coming back is going to hurt Felix probably the most in terms of his snaps. I think, you know, he's going to have maybe like, 12 11 12 a game maybe now and like you got to do more with those opportunities right um and, and it's hard for a young player but hopefully he can take advantage of that um you know get get a little bit more out of there he's growing learning still a young player i don't think there's much concern there long term um uche obviously trade acquisition someone they brought in to try and give this pass rush a little bit of juice as a, as a speed guy um, hasn't really been there yet. Um, hasn't really played a whole lot. So it's not necessarily his fault. And I think he's kind of going in the wrong direction. I think, you know, at one point he was playing a little bit more and now this last week, I think he had like six 
total snaps or something. It, it just wasn't a lot. Um, I do think some of that is like um, schematic and like they have an idea of what they want to use him for and who they want to use him against. Okay. He is a good athlete, right? So I think they, they have an idea to maybe use him against some of these quarterbacks who are more of like a running threat and have him in there as like a potential, you know, rusher who can spy someone who can drop out, who can present rush and then drop out and spy a quarterback and, and really, you know, be that kind of like extra blitzer almost. Um, so I think that's kind of the the plan there and why we haven't really seen him kind of emerge over these last couple of weeks. Um, they're using him on special teams a little bit. I, I think they could probably use him a little more there, but we'll, we'll just kind of see how that the evolution is there. I, I think, you know, some of the reason they went out and got Uche, they liked him a lot coming out uh, in the draft. Okay. And yeah, I think he's someone that if they had got him in the off season, he'd be performing a little bit better because they could have really formulated a plan. I think it, it might've been a little, um, a, a little overzealous to go out and get him into the mid season mark, especially when, you know, you got a mini who coming back and whatnot. Um, really right now there's just a lot of cooks in the kitchen in terms of the chiefs and their pass rush and trying to, you know, figure out, okay, who, who are the best players again, kind of similarly to what they got going on uh, in the, in the secondary. All right. And then before I let you go, uh, we definitely have to talk about uh, special teams because Butker's been out and then uh, Schrader is also uh, banged up. So uh, they're down to their third kicker the last few weeks. So what's the latest there as far as the place kicking situation? Shoot. I mean, you can't really ask for a better situation in terms of you get one injured, you have another come in, he's perfect. <laughs> you get another that comes in, he's injured. Uh, and then, you know, you get get this guy, Matthew Wright, who you've had before, who, you know, everyone wants to uh, uh, say, oh, well, he's not perfect. Well, he missed like a 59-yarder at like halftime you know, that they tried last week. I don't really count that, right? Like <laughs> yeah, right. That, that at one point he, Matthew Wright, made a 59-yarder for Kansas City, and guess what? It was the franchise record for a long kick for the Kansas City Chiefs for about a week. And then Harrison Butker came back, <laughs> and he set the new franchise record that following week. So this guy had the, the team's franchise record for a week. He's a guy they're comfortable with, they're familiar with. It sucks that Schrader got hurt because I, I thought he was phenomenal those first two games and, and uh, is really a bright young kid. I hope that maybe he can come back this week and that the hamstring thing wasn't a, a long-term thing. I don't know if that's the case. Maybe, um, you know, he's a guy who ends up on, on injured reserve when they bring Hollywood back and they just keep elevating, um, you know, uh, the, the kid Matthew Wright from the practice squad and, um, and then, you know, go ahead and, and bring Harrison back when he's ready. Um, but yeah, it's, it's obviously not ideal, but I think, you know, um, it, it speaks a lot to the special teams coach that the chiefs have Dave Tobe and how phenomenal he is that there has yep. not been much in terms of drop off on this unit um, with, with Schrader and then with Matthew, Wright. Um, That's it. All the people credit. People don't talk about him enough. And yeah. it's, you know, and I, and, and look, deservedly so Andy Reid, and then of course Spags, but I mean, the, the coaching staff, one, two, three, I mean, it's, it's bar none. I yeah. mean, you know, elite. And so is it a surprise that, that, that this is the best team in football the last, the last six years? No. I mean, you know, people, people, card. people always ask me, what's the, uh, the difference, right? between a good team and a bad team in the NFL. And I will always say it's not the quarterback position. It's actually coaching. coaching That's it. I've been trying to tell my Jet fans that for a couple of months now. <laughs> They've got just as much talent as any team, but their coaching staff is terrible. And yep. that's the reason why they'll have a new coaching staff next year. And and why if they get the right coaching staff, they'll be right in it. But that's it. I mean, look at the, look at the Chargers, the team that the Chiefs are playing this week. I mean, that's a perfect example. Chargers, you look at the Broncos and what Sean Payton's done with them. Just having that coach, that presence, who can focus in on the details and make you more detail-oriented, make sure that everyone knows their job week in and week out, 
That's the key. And that's uh, why the Chiefs are the Chiefs. All right. So uh, I got to ask you, oh, by the way, Butker, I mean, what, when do you think he is coming back? What's the timetable? You know, they said four weeks. So what, he's two two weeks into that now, uh, three weeks and in, three weeks into that now. So, I mean, potentially for week 15, we'll, we'll just see, I, you know, obviously the meniscus injury, you know, got to see how, how a guy responds, how he heals um, and, and whether or not, you know, he can, uh, really come back from that quite as quick. I don't think, you know, with how a guy like Schrader and a guy like Matthew Wright have performed, I don't think the Chiefs are going to rush him back. Yeah. That's for certain. Absolutely. It's about the postseason. That's it. Big kicks. Right. We know how important he is.